Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by Living Waters Abide Ministries. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Jesus reminds us to watch for the signs of his return. Today, we will explore further what we are seeing in our times that line up with what signs he said would indicate the potential of the end and his return. We will also discuss the practical meaning of this as we watch and as a remnant prepare as he so leads. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, Kathy. Uh, this good is, morning. Uh, End Times Friday. Uh, this will be airing, I believe, uh, 27th of, uh, uh, yeah, 27th June. of June. June coming yeah. up. Uh, day after my birthday, actually. Um, ah, that's right. 54 this year. No, 74. Yeah, 54, year. yeah. I was 54. That's your wedding anniversary. 54, <laughs> that's good. That's my uh, 54th <laughs> wedding anniversary. I'm fi- 74th I'm, birthday. I'm, I'm, I'm 54 years old. Uh huh. <laughs> actually, 75. Is my 75. Birth, is my oh, birthday. this is 75. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So your wed that's right. Your wedding anniversary is 20 years after my birthday. And so that's what I have. That's what I remember. So you're at, you're at 54 wedding and yep. 75 birthday, and you're going to be at the Biltmore se- celebrating. That's yeah. a fun place to celebrate. Yeah. We'll have a big party. It'd be Linda's birthday, my birthday anniversary. What birthday is this for Linda? She's a little bit younger than you, right? She's a baby. She's 73. Okay. Yeah. Just a young one. She still, she still looks like a baby. <laughs> um, well, we, uh, you know, we, as, uh, we had Denny, uh, uh, Weinberg on and, um, who's, you know, our expert from Israel. Um, and, uh, remember he, um, described that the Northern border, uh, was mm. on, was on fire, yes. uh, which is hard to, it's hard for us to fathom it. One, one reason is we, is we've gotten zero news on this. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not even an item that anybody even understands or thinks. Um, but, uh, their Northern border, uh, with, uh, Lebanon and basically it's Hezbollah and what they're doing, uh, as Denny described it is they are lobbying, uh, these missiles that actually purposely start fires. Right. Um, and a lot of them. And a right. lot of them. And, um, and they basically spread them across the entire northern uh, border. So I want to show, uh, if, if you're on YouTube, you can see this. So we'll try to describe it to you for those that are listening um, uh, on uh, uh, just sound. But um, here's, here's a picture uh, that Denny, Denny sent us uh, mm-hmm. of the fire. Um, and you can see... It's widespread, and there's mm-hmm. there's just fire everywhere, um, which includes you know, there's some housing areas, and uh, mostly it's just just the border area. It hasn't killed many people, but um, obviously it's causing a lot of resources to try to put it out. And they just what they keep doing is keep as they put things out, they just keep lobbying more, you know. So um, they have a new battle on the northern front in addition to what they're fighting out in uh, Gaza. Uh, and uh, they did recover, by the way, uh, hostages, uh, mm-hmm. four or five hostages that a came few, yeah. uh, in, uh, in the tunnels. Uh, they don't think that many, many are left, but uh, they're still going after us. So it's an interesting dynamic. Denny will uh, update us on uh, the latest because uh, they had a person from the opposition party who was the prime minister before uh, resign from the coalition. Um, mm. and he's trying to push, you know, a conclusion, Hey, get this done. Um, and we'll see what the political out, out, uh, come of all that. Danny will be able to comment on that, but it's a lot of things going on in Israel. So it's very volatile, uh, Northern front, Southern front, um, and then politically inside the country of, you know, okay, what, where's it, where's this going to go, right. um, as, as things line up. So we'll keep watching that. Uh, but, um, We've been discussing uh, economics, and um, when uh, you know, one of the things that the Holy Spirit uh, does for us is tell us of things to come. 
Mm -hmm. um, and it's a heads up, uh, pay attention, uh, and then start. What it, what it should uh, uh, initiate uh, is our dialogue with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to say, okay, I see, I see this. Thank you for alerting me. Right. Um, I don't know what to do with this yet. Matter of fact, he says, don't you try to figure out what to do with this yet. Right. Um, let me show you. <laughs> uh, let me let me show you. But I'm giving you enough uh, warning or heads up or time to be prepared for something that I need to reveal to you. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, remember, this can be personal stuff. Uh, just things that God says, hey, I'm going to uh, it's uh, I'd like you to think about uh uh, selling your house, or I'd like you to think about um, maybe a new direction for you, um, mm -hmm. uh, or a new ministry, or something that's gonna gonna happen with us. Like for example, with the ministry we've got, uh, through a series of things that have been introduced to us, um, God has shown us that we are uh, we have ability to. It's effective to develop an abiding for unbelievers. Mm -hmm. um, and it happened, you know, started to happen. God said, hey, pay attention. Uh, okay, uh, tell us happened more. Happened very unexpectedly, yeah. honestly. And, uh, and God just did yeah, his thing. <laughs> just, just did it and say, okay, now take this further and develop this further, and we are. And, uh, and we're seeing uh, a whole, uh, let's say, opportunity to introduce Jesus in a different way. Because mm. typically, you know, evangelicals have had a approach of, you know, I got to tell you that you need Jesus, uh, you're a sinner, here's the four spiritual laws or something similar, mm -hmm. and then you can become a believer. And it's all geared toward um, trying to persuade them uh, of a transaction that they need, mm -hmm. which, which, by the way, is a true, it's a true statement. Uh, but the approach is interesting. And so what God gave us is that, uh, just get people in the Word of God mm -hmm. um, and don't approach it with an apologetic per se. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll give it as we need to, uh, but uh, he gave it to us. Uh, so pay attention. We're developing it, and it's starting to have some impact. Um, mm -hmm. And it's like, huh. Uh, and what we did is we did pay attention. Huh, we saw that. Uh, let me tell you something. Okay. Now we went into a dialogue with him. Mm -hmm. show me more, show me more, walk me down the path. Um, and then we did. And then, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. And then all of a sudden it starts to come together. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, it's, it's there. So um, that can happen on a personal level, uh, certainly. Um, but then it can also happen on a global level. Uh, right. And that is, hey, things are happening in a global way that are going to impact everybody is going to be subject to this, mm -hmm. um, you know. Just, just as an, you know, this is just an analogy of it. But uh, here in Colorado, uh, last weekend, uh, we basically, you know, had a cloudburst uh, mm -hmm. happen uh, over the entire Front Range, uh, where it was massive uh, rain and hail. Oh wow! Uh, and you know, it washed gullies out and and uh, all kinds of stuff, and streets were flooded and. Uh, you know, and the forecast, you know, came, hey, hey, this is coming. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't like, well, Rich, on your house, it's going to happen. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's coming to the front range. Right. And everybody's going to get impacted by this and, mm -hmm. and pay, pay attention to it. Uh, it wasn't, you know, as I've tried to describe, it's, it, there, we have personal things happen, but this wasn't personal. It was more what I call global. Right. Um, and we did. We got we got impacted by it. And, and a lot of people got impacted by it. So it was get ready. Hey, put your cars in the garage, for example, mm -hmm. uh, so you don't get the hail damage. Um, uh, you know, a variety of things. Don't go driving out when this happens and uh, pay attention to the action ne needed based on the global thing. So mm -hmm. uh, the one thing that we're starting to see is a global uh, indicators that mm -hmm. that while the the news is uh, saying we have a strong economy, uh, and particularly the stock market has been pretty favorable. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of of information that God's trying to say, hey, pay attention. 
Right. Um, yeah, it looks that way today. Mm -hmm. But there's things happening that you need to be aware of that uh, are going to have an impact on a global basis. And because we're part of that global basis, um, it's going to impact us. Mm -hmm. um, not purposely, not individually, but more corporately. Right. Uh, and, but because of that, uh, God says, okay, pay attention. Now, this should initiate a personal dialogue with God. Uh, mm. Okay, help me understand it with my investments, my job, my career, my income, my spending, my saving. All of this uh, is something that he is uh, wanting to say, now that you at least are paying attention, mm -hmm. I'll guide you step by step into uh, what, how to get prepared for this or how to get ready for it, uh, because he said it, it means something. So just, I'm just going to give you some information here that... Um, uh, this is uh, last week, uh, Bank of America uh, reported that uh, there's been a sell-off of stocks uh, in the last five weeks from, from, from people that are in their accounts. And so in, instead of taking, you know, selling stock and reinvesting it back in the stock market, they're, they're taking it out of the stock market. Oh, interesting. Uh, and it's a big, you know, billions of dollars uh, of it. So uh, uh, it's a big thing. And then there was a, uh, the second largest sell-off of tech star of, of tech stocks in history, in history, right. Uh, last week. Um, so that that's starting. And that means, I don't know if you remember, um, the, the bubble, uh, you know, that, uh, was, uh, the hot, the hot internet, uh, and what they called tech stocks back in the late 1990s. Uh, where there was a run-up of stocks, and all of a sudden it was a mm -hmm. great, great collapse. Uh, dot com, what they called dot com stocks. Right. Uh, that and the same thing in two thousand and and eight. Um, uh, and then uh, on the debt level, uh, there's record debt of consumers. Right. Um, and it's it's growing uh, dramatically, uh, like uh, eight nine nine percent in the last year. Uh, and then we're talking, you know, therefore trillion, trillions of dollars mm -hmm. of debt. And what's happening is that about 60 to 70 percent they, they see in the United States are living on debt, mm -hmm. living on credit card. And the reason is inflation. Right. Uh, I actually read something just the other day talking about um, in the last since COVID, um, the cost of owning a house, even if you owned it outright, between repairs, taxes, all of these sort of things in the last four years has increased on average between 23 and 26 percent per wow. household. Wow. That's a huge number, right? Yep. Yep. Um, and because of, um, you know, when you're under pressure financially um, and you have obligations like like mortgages and rent and real estate taxes and insurance and uh things like that um and it, even just maintenance and yeah yeah and uh but it, what it does is is that you start to um, not buy things mm -hmm. that would keep stimulating the economy uh um, right because you just decide i've got to try to keep up and just survive mm -hmm. it your margin is being taken away, right? Yeah, yeah. It's called uh, marginal income, actually. And uh, uh, as that shrinks, and that's that's why you know Casey uh, Mulligan that we've had on, we should actually have him on again. I think I mentioned this before to talk about that because that's his theory: mm -hmm. is that everything's really geared toward this marginal income. You know, ta mm -hmm. taxes, government policies, inflation, uh, and when you when you reduce that, mm -hmm. uh, it it causes people not to buy things, which means right. that, then company doesn't have sales and they start to lay people off. And that's how it snowballs mm -hmm. uh, is, is try to do that. And um, uh, the D U.S. debt burden uh, is now um, in a couple of days, it's going to be 35 trillion. And we've added a trillion in the last quarter mm. headed toward 36 and on. Wow. Um, and uh, the Fed, because they can't, can't get the debt interest rates down to where it doesn't make a difference so now that it's it's really impacting you know the united states and um uh and what's happened particularly as the uh debt has increased uh it's it's caused bond what they call bondholders to uh not reinvest back in bonds because they're concerned mm -hmm. about that 
um, and there's a big impact you know, on the economy. So uh, what's happening, uh, and this is what we urge everybody to consider, is that um, I believe this is a heads up. Mm-hmm. Uh, God is saying, let me, let me warn you, uh, truth is truth. There are things happening underneath the surface that mm-hmm. would spell that there's going to be uh, what we would call recession. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, by the way, it might be able to be pushed off until the election. Uh, right. and, and depending who gets elected, it might even be pushed off even, even further. But it doesn't change the info. Matter of fact, it would be actually good to be pushed off because it gives us time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't think it's imminent like we're on, a, on, a, on the verge of a crisis. Um, but I do believe we're being warned. Mm-hmm. Pay attention. Uh, it's more fragile than it looks. It's, it's more fragile than it looks. And globally, there could be a what we call a snowball, uh, mm-hmm. you know, a uh, rolling downhill effect that it picks up steam. Uh, because once it ha- once it starts to happen, mm-hmm. uh, and it's not now noted as happening, uh, other people then start to join that process, and pu- everybody right. everybody pulls back. Oh, we're having a recession. We're going to have a recession. It started. Uh, probably it is going to impact me, and and it kind of wait. And God, I think God's saying, "Hey, pay attention. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm giving you a heads up." And what that should initiate is for us to pursue. Um, I'm willing to pay attention. I'm not going to put, in other words, my head in the sand right. and say it doesn't matter. I'm going to receive that. Father, what he got to say to me? Well, it's kind of cool. He actually uh, talks to us a little bit about how to approach it. So go to uh, Colossians chapter uh, 1, mm-hmm. um, and I believe we were doing 9 to 12, right? Yes. Okay, it says, for this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. And to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers in the inheritance of the saints in the light. Yep. Um, So uh, if we look at... Uh, you know, this beautiful, you know, uh, admonition of, uh, you know, this is what uh, he's trying to lead us into. He said that um, uh, one is that um, we are partakers of the inheritance of the saints and the light and that Mm. um, our inheritance uh, is, remember, is the life of God. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, and he describes it. The life of God is in the saints, uh, and, it's, and it's living in the light. And the, the word light there is disclosing the truth, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll know the truth. You'll see the truth. You inherit the ability to see the truth, and it'll be clear to you. Right. Uh, and he says it's a, it's a great inheritance to have the life of God. Um, and, he, and he kind of implies that um, it's a willingness to receive it, which is uh, I'll surrender my will to your will. So mm-hmm. in this scenario, when we're trying to say it's a, it's a heads up, um, it's kind of a simple approach. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's this. Um, you can go one of two ways. I don't care. Uh, eh, so what? I'm fine. Uh, you know, how bad can it get? Um, mm-hmm. Uh, what difference does it make? Hey, God will take care of me anyway. Um, I don't need to worry about this. And what you're saying is that my determination is primary over seeking mm-hmm. God, God's determination. Um, or the second way would be, um, I, don't, I don't know uh, the outcome of this, but I have a heart to go to the light. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm willing to go to the light. I'm willing to surrender my will. Because the inheritance comes from the death. Christ said, I've died and, and given it to you. Mm-hmm. You have to die to receive it. Right. That's really interesting right. in a spiritual way uh, because it's not automatic. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's I have to put to death self to receive the inheritance. 
um, and, and go into the <laughs> And by the, the way, self, I would actually say maybe there's three ways that could go there. Because okay. self can look two different ways. Okay. One, by the, uh, it doesn't matter, whatever, I'm just going to kind of ignore it. Two, you're pressing into God, which is not self. That's that's coming against that. And then the third way to go to self is I see all this and I'm going to run and take care of it on my own. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so so self can be on either side of that. Right. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Really good point yeah. is that. Uh, OK. All right. Well, therefore, mm-hmm. um, I'm going to go do X, Y and Z, you know, um, right. and um, and Gus as well. <laughs> Holly just said, pay attention. That's not it either. <laughs> you know, follow my will. I, I really like right. that you're saying that, that uh, yes, it can be, uh, I will take action. I, re- mm-hmm. I received the warning. Okay, that's great. Right. But based on that warning, I'm going to go take action and make my own decisions. And God says, right. God, you don't need to. Uh, because, because why? Well, he says, um, he said, I'm praying and asking and requiring mm-hmm. and, and inviting you that you're filled in verse nine mm. with the with what in verse nine he says it filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and, and spiritual and understanding. spiritual understanding uh, that uh, knowledge of his will mm-hmm. in wisdom and under and spiritual understanding that mm-hmm. um, uh, yes I'm going to ask you to pay attention uh, now. Um, I will deliver to you the knowledge and the, and, and, mm-hmm. and the, the word there is the experiencing of, right. Uh, it won't be just, yeah, you'll know it intellectually is no, you'll start to walk it and you'll understand my will. Um, and along that path of my will, I'm going to give you wisdom. Mm-hmm. Uh, and remember wisdom is, is the beauty of God's, uh, absolute way to bring us the covenant um, and help us understand the right. steps to have him deliver that covenant um, because he knows and we don't. Mm-hmm. He said, I'll give you that wisdom. And that's why it's unique. Uh, and, and, and you and I really, be car- we're, we're always careful not to make a global, we see global information. Right. But we don't make global proclamation. Absolutely not. Yeah. Well, therefore, go do these three things. No. Mm-hmm. Uh, what we say is, yeah, I, I, and I really, I, I just, I can't say it strong enough. Uh, pay attention, mm-hmm. but seek God's wisdom. He'll deliver it to you. Uh, he'll now right. show you what to do with it. And he said, not only will I give you uh, wisdom, um, I'm going to give you spiritual understanding. Uh, there are forces. Yeah, so talk about the difference between those two things. Well, um, uh, Wisdom is really uh, insight of uh, let me say let me show you what what this is gonna how this is gonna impact you and the steps mm-hmm. that I'm asking you to take to apply uh, in a practical way and that actually mm-hmm. the word word the word wisdom even me- means this I'll give you practical steps mm-hmm. that you'll know which way to go right. Uh, go right, go left, do this, do that, not do it, don't do this, uh, wait for this, uh, here's how I want you to approach it. Um, and so it's, it's walking forward with the steps as we get God's wisdom of here's what I'm going to do, God speaking, and here's what I want you to do. Mm-hmm. Okay, understanding is giving you context for that. Mm-hmm. It's giving you the why for this. Right. Um, I'm going to show you things. And, and he said spirit. He used the word spiritual there because it's not mechanical mm-hmm. and it's not just natural logic. Right. Uh, and there's often so many other things going on that we don't see in, in the logic, in the flesh, right, that God needs to reveal in the spiritual realm that are going on as that's well. That's right. Yeah. And, and yeah. There, are, there are dynamics going on. And, um, uh, and by the way, I might even show you um, a much deeper level of this. Like, for example, uh, in our, our uh, you know, end times Fridays, this is about, well, maybe we're headed toward the tribulation uh, mm-hmm. and get ready. Uh, and what we're talking about today is, well, this is just showing signs of what's going to happen. And mm-hmm. so in the moment, okay, forget, forget the uh, end times of the tribulation. It's just another uh, global thing happening. Okay. He might show a spiritual understanding to say, as you start to evaluate this and look at this, 
you might be seeing that this is headed toward mm -hmm. setting things up for the tribulation. Right. And I'll give you spiritual understanding of that because there's bigger things happening. Mm -hmm. And I'll start to help you understand it uh, and understand the why of it, the context of it, the uh, motivation behind it, uh, the hope that we might have. Um, understanding is that I see a little bit what God's up to as, mm -hmm. a, as opposed to the what I'm supposed to do. Right. And what he's going to do. I see the, oh, I, now I understand, mm -hmm. yes. you know, yeah. you know uh, what's going on. Uh, so that, you know, think of, um, I don't know if you remember uh, in college, you know, when you went to a math course, <laughs> um, they would be trying to show you a concept, mm -hmm. uh, formulas and stuff. Um, and you could mechanically do it. Okay, I can do this. Um, mm -hmm. And I can learn it, how to do it mechanically. You can just pattern it, yeah, right? I you can can't pattern just pattern it. it. But there becomes this moment when through receiving, 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 you understand it. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. I understand it now. Right. And now I can apply that. To going multiple forward, situations, right? To multiple right? situations <laughs> because I, I finally understood the concept. Mm -hmm. um, and understanding is I, I've received it now. And I, I really see something that I didn't see before. Right. I wasn't just mechanically responding. Mm -hmm. It was like, ah, okay, I got it. Um, uh, and there's uh, the word understanding is you start to um, have a strength of of uh, relationship that you begin to see things that God wants you to see. And mm -hmm. it, it, what it does is it settles your heart. Right. Uh, even, even when there's, you know, bad news coming up, it's like, well, but I'm going to show you something that right. you understand it. Mm -hmm. And when you understand it, it's like, oh, okay. Uh, and then our, by the way, our next question is always now what? <laughs> right. Right. You know, what do we do next? So, um, you know, we'll continue this. Uh, we'll go through, uh, more of, uh, Colossians and, and the impact of that, but um, with uh, what we're trying to alert everybody is, I think God's given us a heads up. Uh, our heart is, do you do you want to follow? Uh, I'd like to have a heart to follow. I don't need to figure. Mm -hmm. the, I don't need to figure this out. I don't need to ignore it. Um, I just need to be willing to receive wisdom yep. and understanding that will actually reveal His will, which is going to be best and none better. Because uh, it's born, one of, the, one of the things that we understand is he's leading me to the covenant, regardless of yes. what's happening on the world. Right, uh, right. So we'll, we'll talk more about it. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us uh, insight about this. We pray that we'll continue to talk about it. And uh, we, lift, we do lift Israel up with those fires right now. And uh, just pray that they can get those under control and uh, it won't impact uh, a broader region. And that uh, you'll be given wisdom to them uh, and give them spiritual understanding. And so we just pray for that. And Thank you that you're giving us a heads up about economic things that we could at least raise the question and be aware of it and uh, seek you. We thank you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks so much for sharing such a good conversation. I want to leave one more verse out there for today for our listeners that just goes so beautifully with what we've talked about. And that is Daniel 2.22. Mm. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. Ah, there we go. Um, so just a great anchor verse for, for this time, for sure. Um, but thank you for listening to us today. And if you have any questions, send them in to us at questions at abideministries.com. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Yep. Uh, and Kathy, uh, uh, bring that verse back up next time. Will do. Because uh, that's, uh, it's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a phenomenal yeah, passage. <laughs> how, about, how about if I tell you secrets? Yeah, we'd like that. We'd like that. <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll see you soon. Sounds good. Yep. All right. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by Living Waters Abide Ministries. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.